Hi, everybody, and thank you for joining me today. Uh, we are going to go over uh, fill patterns and the different types, um, you know, when you want to use them, when you don't want to use them, uh, and, and just basically fill patterns in general. So what we have here is I've got a peach uh, on my screen. You can see we've got leaves, we've got a peach, we've got kind of like a highlight. So the first thing we want to do is uh, you want to digitize, obviously, from the back to the front. So by looking at that, the peach is behind the leaves, and obviously the highlight will be on top. So the first object we want to digitize will be the peach itself. So we'll go to our embroidery tab and choose our uniform area, and choose area with pattern. In here, I'm going to change it from auto to autocomplete. I will then left click on the peach area, which you can see it highlights it with running ants. I'll then press my inner key and it's going to fill it automatically for us. I'll close this box down. I'll zoom in a little bit, turn on my 3D look. And as you can see, it's just a regular fill pattern. I'll turn off my vector so we can see it. It's just nothing fancy about it. Well, let's say for a peach, you want it to kind of look like, you know, peaches are kind of furry. So what we want to do is select our arrow tool, select our object to highlight it. We're going to come up here into our fill patterns which is the object right here shows is just a plain default fill pattern. Click on it, it's going to open a box with all our fill patterns. And I want to say there's 60 plus different style fill patterns. Now what we have right here is just our math fill patterns. Uh, the ones with locks on them are the ones that if you would want this fill pattern is you click on it and if you're hooked into the internet it will go ahead and send you to Sierra's website so that you can purchase the fill pattern from them. Uh, what I want to do is come over here to all and it's going to show us all the different types of fill patterns that are available with your software. Uh, which are, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you got the brown, the yellow, the blue, and the green. I'm going to go ahead and move this window over a little, down a little bit. There we go, so I can see everything. Okay, we are to the highest level. Uh, the first one up here you've got is yellow. These are our different style fill patterns. As you can see, the, you know, one looks like you know, little eggs if you're doing a beehive and you want it to look like, uh, you know, it's filled with honey. We've got this one here, if you're doing a blanket, um, you know, if you got a zigzag pattern. Um, down here in the blue area, we'll go ahead and zoom down to the blue. We've got um, what kind of looks like blankets, or what I like to refer if you're doing like, you know, cotton seats if you're doing a car, or you're doing, uh, you know, uh, some type of background where it's got a, a, a t-shirt in the, in, in, you know, on a person, or what have you. These are also different styles here. Um, you can see these three right here, it kind of looks like fur. If you're doing a dog, that works really good. Uh, it gives the effect of uh, you know, fur on the animal. Still, you fill the whole animal, but you choose this fill pattern and it gives a different effect. To give an example, I'll go ahead and choose this one here. We'll click OK. And it's going to change our fill pattern. Let's go up to View. And we're going to go to simulation. And let's just go ahead and zoom into the fill pattern. Get a rough idea. And you can kind of see it looks like, you know, it could be kind of furry. Um, it gives a, this is definitely a different effect than just doing a plat, uh, flat fill. Um, it gives you that, you know, more of a 3D look with the fill pattern. Um, if you don't like it, we can come up here and we'll go back to embroidery. We'll select our fill pattern. We'll come back up in here and make sure we have all selected. And then we've got our, our normal fill patterns. If you're doing like wood grain, uh, if you're doing waves, uh, maybe kind of, uh, you know, cloud scenery. These up here, these, these would be really good for that. You got more of a fill, uh, a fur look here. Um, let's go down to the green area. Oops, a little bit too far. Let me zoom up a little bit. In here, these are kind of what you what you normally look at as maybe um, being embossed. Uh, basically, what embossed is, for example, if you look at this one here, uh, embossed is basically like a fill pattern with satin stitches of a design on top of the fill pattern. So it kind of gives it that raised bubble effect. Um, it gives a whole new look to your design. Uh, let me find one that we can see on our animal, or I'm sorry, on our piece. Let's just choose the, 
the dot one here. And we'll click OK. And as you can see, this is the effect that we're going to get. And I'm going to go ahead and grab my image, slide it over to where I'm on the zero mark so I can get a better feel. And zoom in. Of course, I did move my image because I didn't select everything. Let's go ahead and move it now. All right. And we're going to go ahead and zoom in to this particular area. Of course, I undid it. So let's go back up in here and choose all. And we're going to choose the emboss look, which is right here. Click OK. And as you see, it kind of gives it like a, a, you know, little dots that stick up off the design. So what you got here is this is a fill pattern here in the background. These stitches here to create the ball effect or the dots are actually satin stitches. So what happens is it puts a stitch here, it puts one here, then tacks it down as it runs across to the next section, then puts here to here. So you get basically a mixture of a satin fill along with a fill pattern, and that gives your design a whole new different look. Uh, but for the object here, we are going to choose a, um, a furry look. So let's just go ahead and uh, we'll choose this one here. We'll click OK. That gives us a kind of a furry look or a peach fur. We'll go ahead and deactivate that. We'll turn our vectors back on. And one thing I do like doing is when I'm digitizing, I like going up here and selecting my vector and locking it so that I cannot select it while I'm doing the design. Because if you're doing a design that's got, you know, 5, 6, 15 colors in it, you know, sometimes you've got a highlight section, you've got to click off of it to deactivate it. Well, if your vectors are not locked, you click off of the design to deactivate it. Well, now you've highlighted your image and it, it puts the image on top so your stitches are now below. So then you've got to zoom out click off away from the image to deactivate it to then go back in and finish your digitizing. So what I like doing is choosing the drop down menu, locking my vector so if I do have to click off, I can click off and I'm not highlighting the image. Uh, just a little trick the way I, I digitize. Um, so we've got our first color done. I will choose my second color. Right click on the first color we digitized and that puts a little X over the one and it basically turns it off. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with say Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop or Curl Draw, and they work in layers, you're doing the same thing here with your colors. You basically have layers of colors and you just basically turn off a layer to be able to work with all the other colors. Especially if you've got a design, like I said, it's got 8, 15, 22 colors. It's hard to digitize on top of colors, on top of colors, on top of colors, and to see your image at the same time. So once you're done with the color in that section, right click on it to turn it off, you see your full image, it's a lot easier to uh, get into depth with your digitizing. We'll go ahead once again, choose our area fill pattern. We'll come in here and change it from auto to auto complete. I'll click on this set of leaves and press enter. I'll change this leaves, press enter, and I'll choose this last one and press enter. So now that we have our leaves done, I'll grab my select arrow tool and I want to select them and I want to come up here and change it to kind of resemble leaves. So we'll uh, choose all. And what we're doing is we're, we're going through to kind of look for a split pattern. All right, obviously it's not going to be in the green that, that is embossed. Um, ours, we could possibly choose the brown area, which I would go with kind of like a wavy look. Ah, let's get that one. That's more of a jagged. We'll click OK, and that's going to turn it to more of a, of a wavy look. Now, as you can see, it's going all obviously one direction. Well, this red line here with connected by two yellow or orangish yellow dots, that is your fill angle. By selecting that and holding the left mouse button and, and changing the direction of the fills will give your, your design a different look or a different feel. So for example, down here, I don't want everything to go left and right. I want to make this one close to a 90, and I'm going to change this one almost like a 45 degree angle. So that when you do come up here and change your fill pattern, 
even though uh, it's the same fill pattern, giving it a different angle is going to give you a different effect. Now you don't have to do all the leaves in the same fancy fill pattern. We can come in here and change this one instead of choosing, uh, let's see, we'll go with this one here and maybe switching it up to give your design a different look. We'll right click back on the peach and then we've got our design. So when looking at it, you've got you know a couple different fill patterns to give a different look, a different feel rather than doing a plain style fill. Um, now some designs, you know, it's obvious you can do it that way. If you're doing a building and you've got a, uh, a rectangle, let me turn on my straight edge, and you're doing the side of a building and you want to get kind of a feel, a feel of, you know, it's, it's got windows, using the fancy fill patterns, is a great idea. So we'll choose here, we'll come up here, and we'll go to all, and then I'm gonna look for the embossed look, which is the green area, and I'm gonna kinda look for little squares, similar to something probably like this one. Click OK, and if I change it to say a gray color, it kind of gives the feel, uh, the, you know, the feel of it's a, it's a, it's a building, but it has, you know, it's got windows, but it's a shadow effect. So using different fill patterns, this will give a, a different effect when it sews compared to just a, a flat, you know, side of a building. This gives it more of a 3D um, uh, bubble look. Any questions so far about using uh, different fill patterns for different sections um, of designs? All right. All right, so we're going to come back to here. We're going to do our, our uh, peach highlight. We're going to come over to our turning area. And we are going to choose autocomplete. Select it, press enter. You know, and, and maybe for this one, whoops. And maybe for this one, I'm going to go ahead and leave it as a plain fill pattern. And uh, let's just choose color three. So now we've got our design, uh, but the highlight of the peach should just be a little bit different shade than the actual peach itself. So to change the colors, we can click here on the color palette. Our first color is red. Well, obviously, we want it to be more of a peach color. We'll choose here. Second color is green leaves. I want the leaves to be a little bit darker. I'll scroll that over. Now our third color, which is the highlight, I want to be a different uh, shade than the peach color. So right now I look over here on the right and I can see my peach color is 224 and 121 and zero. So I want to come to the, the highlight color and I'm going to change my red, green, and blue to 224, 121, and zero. So now I've got the two of the same colors, but it's going to be a little bit lighter. I could select here and just make it just a slight difference in change. Click apply. Okay. And now I've got the two different colors. So if I select this color here, go to my default and choose. Uh, let's see. And if you forget which one you chose, which I have right now, I will select the peach. At the top, it tells me I chose PTM 0154. I will select the highlight. I'll go here. And I'm going to select 0154. Maybe it was 0164. All right, we'll click OK. And there we have our peach. Let me go delete our building here. And then we've got our peach to where we've got our two different colors, we've got our leaves, and we've got our highlight using the different fill patterns. So you get a different effect. All right, any questions on that so far?
All right, I'm going to open up a new window here, and I'm going to select a new image. Uh, choose a block one here. Let's just choose the star. All right, so we have a star here. I'm going to make it a little bit larger so we can see this effect. I'll zoom in a little bit. The other fill patterns that come with the software in Uniform Area is you've got an area with programmable stitch. Uh, by selecting this object, we'll go ahead and choose autocomplete, choose the blue, and press enter. That's because it's combined, it's not a perfect circle. Let's just go ahead and delete that here. And I'll show you why in a minute when I do my a complete circle. I change it to this one here. And I'm going to choose embroidery, uniform area, programmable stitch. All right. Of course, it's red, so we can't see it. So I'm going to change it since it's red on red, to a green. That's the programmable stitch. So it's not filled, but it, it, it's almost like uh, they're just running stitches to create the, uh, the effect or the image. Uh, to change this one, we select it. We come up here to the default. And in here, you've got a wide range, a uh, variety of different patterns that you can also place. Um, you know, cross stitch. Um, it all depends on what look you're going for. Um, let's just say you got a two color one. If you want little diamonds with two colors, you select that, it's going to change your design to give you that effect. So if you're doing something in the background of, uh, let's say, a sky um, or a basket, a basket weave, something like this would work out great with two different colors. So you see it's we're using red and green. I would come in here to our color palette. First color is green. I want it to be kind of a brown color. So I'm going to choose brown. The second color, which is blue, should be the same color, but just a little bit lighter. So it kind of blends in. Click Apply. And now i got a two-tone color of a brown and a tan. And this right here, let's just change our background color to, uh, to black so we can see it so it stands out better. You've got kind of like a basket weave. Um, and using the two color browns gives you a different effect as well. So this one is, is, is kind of cool when you don't want the whole object to be filled and you want it to be a loose fill with the garment showing through. This is a good one to choose. It's, it's called programmable stitch. And in here you've got, <coughs> excuse me, you've got, uh, you know, two colors, a few two colors, and mostly you've got solid one colors. You've got a, uh, uh, like a checkerboard pattern. You select this one, you've got a different pattern. Kind of looks like a, a carbon fiber look. So if, you, if you're doing a car and you want the hood to be carbon fiber, you know, you're doing a, a black car, you put a, a silver on top like this, you know, or a charcoal color, and that gives you a different look. So you use a fill pattern with a programmable stitch on top, and you get a different effect um, to, show, you know, to showcase the design. Any questions on the programmable stitch? All right, we'll go ahead and uh, delete the programmable stitch, turn back on my vector. And let's go back to area uniform. You now have area with applique. Basically what this will do is I will select it. I'm going to use my auto complete, select my object and press enter. And what this will do, if you notice, it threw a background color in there just for an applique. You've got a running stitch that goes along the outside and then a zigzag tack down stitch. So, you know, if you're doing an applique design, you lay your fabric down, you do this, it will automatically outline your object and put a tack down stitch automatically for you around the image. Now you want to add a satin border. You simply select the object. Open up your object manager, go to borderline, where it says fill mode none, change that you now want a zigzag. 
and there's your satin border. So by doing the programmable applique stitch, it'll automatically outline your object and then we'll put a tack down, basically like a loose underlay zigzag stitch to tack the fabric uh, to your garment. Then you come across and lay a satin border around it to cover up that rough edge and give you a nice clean uh, effect. Or just leave it as a zigzag look and you kind of get that look of Greek letters uh, of fraternities in college. It gives that, that jagged edge look on your appliques. Any questions on doing an applique? The programmable applique stitch. All right. The next one in the uniform area we have is area with a cross stitch. Same effect. Uh, we'll go up to auto. We'll choose our auto complete. Select our object. Press enter. And it gives you a cross stitch effect. Um, Turn off my vector so we can see it. And there's our cross stitch. So it's like, you know, the old style cross stitch of creating, you know, designs by hand is now just simply click away. You fill the area with a cross stitch pattern. That one's, uh, you know, pretty simple. It's cut and dry. It's uh, left click, select it, hit enter. You've got a cross stitch effect. Change the color, whatever you want, and get that effect. All right, moving right on down the line. We'll come up here in uniform area. We will choose area with the radial fill. I don't know if anybody's ever used this one before, but basically what it does, it kind of starts in the middle and just depending on the shape of your object, it takes it and creates little in uh, circle patterns. If you're doing a rug, this is a good way to do a rug right here is you've got the rug pattern. If it's if it's more of a square shaped uh, different object, it's going to take the shape of that and reposition it. Now it's reconfiguring. And now we got the circle. So it kind of looks like a record. If you're doing a, a record design for a, a record shop, uh, I'm not sure if there's any record shops out there anymore because everything's, you know, downloadable in, in CDs and MP3s and everything else. But for those old school vinyls, you know, it makes it look like a vinyl. You can do this as a record player for someone's design or a DJ. Um, it, it's really cool. This gives a different effect um, to where it's not a solid fill, but it's actually, you, you know, running stitches around a circle or a square or a triangle, whatever shape you're using. All right, we'll come up here, uniform area. We're going to choose area with a texture. This is a cool one if you're doing, like, say, you want it to be a loose fill of grass in a certain area. You're doing grass, um, a sunset design, or grass on the bottom. By selecting the, uh, you know, random, you know, we've got a checkerboard pattern on this one here. We'll go to our default. If you're doing plaid pants and you fill the pants, you know, uh, fill the pants black, put the plaid pattern on top with, say, a, a, a light tan or brown or gray color, now you've got a, a, a plaid pair of shorts. Rather than you manually going and tracing each, every line, creating that, pa uh, that pattern effect. Here's the grass effect I was talking about. If you're doing grass, select this one. You got kind of a grass, you know, a grassy field. It doesn't really work for the circle, uh, but let's just say if I choose uniform area and the area with texture, and I'm going to choose a green, and I'm just going to roughly just give some shape, like say if we have grass on the side of a mountain or whatever design you're doing in front of a building or a, a playground. Of course, there's our plaid pattern, which is the default. Looks kind of cool. I'm going to change it here to the grass effect. And now we have grass. So then you can add your other designs in the background, put a swing set on top, kids playing, a ball bouncing. Whatever you got to do, this will give you a totally different effect um, just by the simply clicking and selecting the object rather than you choosing the manual path stitch over here and outlining each individual blade one at a time, working your way through and creating the stitch effect. So within a couple of seconds, you've created your grass rather than, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes, depends on how detailed you want to get with your design. This is an easier way to do it. All right, does everybody understand? Anybody have any questions of any of the fills 
uh, programmable stitches that we've gone over uh, this morning. All right. Like I said, you know, programmable stitch, different fill patterns. You know, if you want to, to see different ones, um, usually what I suggest in training classes is create, like, say, one-inch squares of fill patterns. And, you know, you've got, if you've got the Avanza, you've got the large 21 by 14-inch hoop. Go ahead and, and put your table on the machine. Hoop up, um, you know, scrap pieces of garment, uh, backing. Uh, what, what works really good is if you get a... Uh, um, a couple yards of muslin that sews out really good and it's just for you create one inch squares um, and, and fit you know you'll be able to fit 20 to 30 of them inside that large jacket back hoop if not more change each different fill or each different little square fill pattern to a different fill pattern in in the software and then sew them out cut it out and now you've got um, samples of what each one looks like while it's sewn out because on screen, it's going to look one way on screen, but when it sews out, it's going to, it's going to give you a different effect depending on what color of thread you use um, and the angle that you're going to do it at. So what I suggest, just if you have the spare time, definitely create one-inch squares, copy them, paste them, and you know create 40 or 50 of them that will make sure they fit inside the hoop and change each one to a different fill pattern. Let the machine sew it out and gives you an idea when you're doing designs, you can reference that and see which one you actually want to use to fit what your uh, your design logo looks like. Do that with the programmable stitch. Um, do that with the, um, let's see, the ones you'll be able to do it with the area with pattern, the programmable stitch, the uh, area with texture. You'll be able to do it with all three of those to get a different effect. The radial fill, it's just going to take the shape of the object and, you know, make it smaller, 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 smaller inside. The area with applique is just a running stitch with a zigzag outline. And, um, you know, those two you probably won't be able to do it or a cross stitch. It's just a cross stitch pattern. You can go ahead and sew out a one inch square of that if you want to get, a, to get an idea of what it looks like. Um, but definitely go ahead and create some squares and, you know, change each one to a different fill pattern. Take the time, sew it out on the machine, and then you got a hard copy uh, for more of a visual to see what it looks like um, while, you know, creating your design rather than choose just a plain fill pattern and you know get the different 3d effect by using you know even the embossed look so that covers um, our programmable fill stitches today are there any questions or anything that we covered anything we went over and like I did say this is being recorded so this video will be uploaded to our YouTube website um, probably on Monday because uh, Mark is out of town and uh, he's the one that uploads them for us but uh, this will be recorded and uh, everybody will get a hard copy of this. So I do appreciate everybody coming out and joining me today. Um, any questions, you know, feel free to open up a support ticket or call in. And, uh, you know, we would be happy to help you. I hope everybody learned some things today. Um, definitely, you know, go out there and, you know, mess with the fill patterns and, and have fun with it. Oh, got a question here. Uh, can you explain again how to get to the YouTube videos? Um, yeah, search for, what you want to do is, uh, in YouTube, search for Cold Desi. Uh, and that'll show you all the videos that we do um, here at Tech Talk or our webinars. Uh, our other website is Coleman Cold Desi, and that'll show you uh, the videos for um, our Coleman & Company website, which is on the Graph Tech Cutter and everything that they do as well. So... Uh, search for Cold Desi on YouTube, and it will bring up a ton of videos. All right, I hope everybody learned something today. Hope everybody has a good Friday, 